Hey everybody, this is going to be a very brief Unit 6 review video. There's going to be a lot of things you can write down. I'm not going to talk a whole lot. So first, we have our key terms. You need to know each of these six key terms. I would recommend writing this down in your notebook so you can use it on the test. These six key terms. Okay, mole ratios. Mole ratios are important. Uh, this would be an example right here. We have iron plus oxygen produces iron oxide. Uh, if you are being asked to have the mole ratio of iron to iron oxide, all that is is a fraction with the correct coefficients in front of each element. So all you would have to do is balance the equation. In this situation, the equation would be balanced with a 4, a 3, and a 2. Just like that, that would be the balanced equation. Therefore, the mole ratio would be 4Fe over 2 Fe to O3, and I'm getting those numbers directly from the balanced equation. So that's how you set up a mole ratio. You just balance the equation and then get the numbers directly from the balanced equation. Uh, you just need to add in the coefficients. Uh, mole ratio, you're going to want to know what it's used for. So I'd take this down. Used as a conversion factor between relating substances in the same equation, because we're relating iron and iron oxide, and it's also related to the coefficients in an equation. Just those two things is what a mole ratio is used for and uh, how it works, so I would take that down. This is a good example of mole ratios. Okay, stoic practice problems. These are going to go through uh, quick. I would recommend going back and watching the previous stoic videos. I promise those will help you. Uh, so our balanced equation, 4 aluminum plus 3 oxygen produces 2 aluminum oxide. Uh, if you want 4 moles of aluminum oxide, how many moles of aluminum do you need? So basically it's like you're substituting a 4 right here. Um, you're basically putting a 4 in there for aluminum oxide. So how many aluminum would you need? Well, you first set up your original mole ratio. So identify the elements that you care about. I always recommend circling the numbers in the equation. We have 4 moles of aluminum oxide and then you want to know about Al. So I always recommend circling the things that are important so you know what you're doing. So you set up your initial mole ratio. Remember, you get this directly from the coefficients. So you have 4 Al because we care about Al and reactant always goes first. 4 Al over 2 aluminum oxide. This mole ratio, the first thing you write down, I get directly from the problem. Then you set it equal to the unknown. So you'd put 4 Al over 2 Al2O3 equals X, because we don't know how much aluminum we want, over, and that should be, sorry, that should be 4, first mistake of the night. That should be a 4 because that was given to us in the problem. 4 aluminum oxide right there. So you have 4 Al over 2 aluminum oxide equal to X over 4 aluminum oxide. Then you just cross multiply and solve. Um, and you end up with 8 moles of aluminum. So all you got to do is write down your given mole ratio. Set it equal to a ratio given to you in this problem. We're given 4 moles of aluminum oxide. So I put 4 moles on bottom to match up with this 2 aluminum oxide. And then we want to know about aluminum, so I would put X on top, and then I would cross multiply and solve, and I would get 8 moles of aluminum. Uh, so I would take down that example, go back and watch the other stoic problems. Other piece of advice, if given grams in a stoic problem, like if this said, if you want 30 grams of aluminum oxide, how many moles of aluminum do you need? Just automatically convert grams to moles using your pink sheet. Always convert grams to moles, and then you will be fine. Just convert grams to moles first, and then you'll be good. Um, and then you just use the method above with the given ratio equals the given number of moles over x. Always convert grams to moles first. Limiting reactant practice. Here's two problems. In a limiting reactant problem, you need to calculate the moles produced by each reactant. So in this case, we have to calculate the moles produced by this and produced by this because they're both reactants. You can do this by using cross multiplication or dimensional analysis. I have the example using dimensional analysis. So important things in the problem. If given half a mole of H2SO4, wrote that down right here, and four hundredths of a mole of AlOH3, wrote that down right here. So write down your two givens first and then set up your picket fence. Then diagonal from your given, you write the number of moles of that given from the equation. So see here, this is what I'm given, 0.400 from the problem, and then two moles of aluminum hydroxide is what I get from the equation, and then I set that equal to however much 
my last reactant has. So here's six moles of H2O. You have to use the same reactant in each problem. I always just choose the last one, usually water. So I get this from my problem right there, and then I have to get this from the equation, three. So I got five, half a mole, and then I get three right here. Um, and then you just multiply straight across and divide. This will produce one mole of water, and this will produce 1.2 moles of water. Whichever one is less is your limiting reactant. So that's how much it will produce, and my limiting reactant is hydrogen sulfate. It will produce one mole of water, and that is my limiting reactant. Remember, the first thing I do is write down my given. Then, right by the given, I do the mole ratio of my given element that has to match this, and then I put a reactant above it. In this case, I chose to use oxygen. You can use, or sorry, a product. You can use whichever product you want. Just make sure you use the same product on both. Write down this example as limiting reactant. Write down the equation. Write down the examples, and you will do fine. That's an example of a limiting reactant problem. You do them all the same way. If you're given one with grams, convert it to moles first, then solve the rest of the problem. Okay, some final helpful hints. Don't overthink it. Most problems are only one step like this. You can see it's just one step. Um, limiting reactants will be one step, but two different reactants like that. The equations that are not balanced on this test are not as complicated as they seem. Typically, only one or two elements actually need to be balanced. The rest will already be balanced. You'll have one like this on your test. That's the only one where everything needs uh, a new number instead of just a one. If a problem gives you grams, just convert to moles using your pink sheet. Always convert to moles first, then do the problem using mole ratios. And then always identify or circle the elements in the problem, like this. Underline or circle them, make sure you know which ones you're using. That way you know exactly what you are dealing with, and also circle the numbers in the problem. That's going to be a really quick review. Hopefully it helps a little bit. Go back, watch the previous videos, but... Write down these examples for stoic and for limiting reactant, and then just follow the same format as these examples on the test. For every stoic problem, use this format. For every limiting reactant problem, use this format, uh, and you will just be fine. Just look at this one page and use these formats. Hopefully this video uploads so you can all see it uh, with my slow internet at home. We never know. Good luck on the test. I know you all do awesome and have um, great success. Farewell.